Well, greetings, brothers in India. This is Chaplain Peter One on YouTube and other places. My website is Eternal Values Ministries dot com. Eternal Values Ministries dot com. And I want to make a video today of First um, Timothy, starting in. Um, I think it was about verse 13. Let's see here. Yes. No, not 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1.13. And I'm making this video just in case we cannot connect with Skype tomorrow. We have more problems. If we don't connect with Skype, perhaps we can try um, Facebook Messenger or something like that. All right. So let me read to you in 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 1.13. It says here, um, Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. All right, here, um, the apostle is... Um, uh, admonishing Timothy to hold down a sound words to good doctrine which you heard of me and when when um, when Timothy heard this of Paul he heard also how he was in prison for the word in fact he's sitting in prison as, as this is being written um, how he suffered how he was beaten thrown out of uh, cities and all kinds of uh, hardship finally beheaded in uh, in Rome by uh, Nero in around 65 AD I believe it is and so which you have heard of me um, we have to put uh, ourselves where the, where the action is in other words we just cannot speak the sound words we have to live them. And so when things get hard, when trials and tribulation come because we we want to live the word, well, this is what makes a good testimony. And this is what uh, Paul is telling Timothy to remember the things which you heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, we know Jesus is faithful. We need to be faithful and the Lord loves us, and we need to love others. Um, scripture tells us love is the chief thing here. Uh, without love, we can have all the gifts of the Spirit. We just make a, a lot of noise. So charity, love, that agape love, where it's a sacrificing love, not just uh, what you can get from somebody, but you actually sacrifice yourself. You help others. You put others before yourself. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus did. Verse 14. That good thing which was, which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. That good thing which was committed unto thee. Well, I know uh, Paul laid his hands on Timothy and prayed for him. Kind of like uh, we do today in ordination. We might lay our hands on somebody who's being ordained as a pastor or a teacher, and we um, we pray over them. And he's and he's saying that these things are committed to Timothy uh, by the Holy Ghost, which, which dwelleth in us. It's the Holy Ghost living in us that gives us the ability to understand to listen to the uh, scripture, to um, be able to preach, be able to teach. Without without the uh, Spirit of God, without the Holy Spirit, um, we're teaching in the flesh and we're preaching in the flesh. So, you can stop this video whenever you want and explain to the men over there, at the, the pastors, and as we continue on, I'm just going to go straight through, brother.
in uh, verse 15, 2 Timothy 1, 15, he says, This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom, of whom is um, uh, Ph Phygellus and Hermogenes. Phygellus and Hermogenes. They've, they've turned away. You know, brothers, um, when we get serious about the scriptures, when we get serious about the Lord and living for God, people are going to turn away from us. Even our, our best friends will turn away from us because the Word of God is quick. It's alive. It's sharp. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divides asunder the bone from the marrow and the soul from the spirit. And so that word of God will sever friendships. It'll come between you and people in your family, between you and your wife, you and your children that don't know the Lord. Isn't that what Jesus said? You think I come to bring peace? I come to bring a, th a sword. Daughter against uh, mother, son against father. Um, this is the reality of it. But... God gives us new friends, faithful friends in the Lord, and this is our real family. Remember what Jesus said when they asked him, well, here's your mother and your father. He said, who's my mother and my father? Them that obey and keep the word of God. We are a new creation. We are the body of Christ. We are the real family, and we are closer together even than... Um, our family in the flesh if they don't know the Lord. That's the truth, my brothers. Verse 16. He goes on to say here, The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Paul was chained in his imprisonments to a soldier. Um, I believe he was also able to go and do business, but he, he was always chained to a soldier. He wasn't just sitting in a prison cell. He was, um, it was their form of um, like the ankle bracelet, where you go to court and they'll say, okay, you can go home, but we're going to put a bracelet on your wrist or on your ankle so we can watch you and know where you are. And you can only go so far. Well, this is the old fashion way they just chained um, a soldier to you. That probably worked even better. And so he's saying give give uh, mercy to the house of Onassis first. Uh, this is the guy um, in the book of Philemon. Let me make sure here. In the book of Philemon that um, he was a uh, a slave working for um, working for this believer, his brother in Christ, and he ran away. And he ran into uh, Paul after he ran away, and Paul led him to the Lord, and he told him, "Go back to your master. I'll fix it for you." I'll make sure that uh, he understands you're a brother in Christ now, and he's to treat you right, and and so forth. And so, um, here it is, Philemon. Um, he writes here, okay. Yeah, I beseech thee for my son, Onassimus, Onassimus. Now, this one is, Onassiphorus. I think it might be the same guy. I would have to check. Whom I have begotten in my bonds. In other words, while he was a prisoner chained, he led this guy to the Lord, which in past time was was uh, to the unprofitable, now profitable to, to the whom I sent again. Thou therefore receive him, that is, uh, my own bowels, whom I would I have retained with me, that in thy steed he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. 
but without thy mind, I would I would uh, do nothing, that thy benefit should not be, as it were, of necessity, but willingly. Okay, he wants uh, Onassimus now to go out with him uh, and help him, but he's got to get permission from uh, this man. But perhaps he departed, therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he had wronged thee, Paul says, if he did anything wrong to you, or if he owed you anything, owed thee aught, put that on my account. Hmm. So Paul's taking big care of business for him here. Put it on my account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how much thou owest unto me, even thy own self besides. So he's saying, uh, he owes you anything, put it to my account, and, and don't forget, you owe me. <laughs> so, so praise the Lord. Um, so he says that on answer for us, he often refreshed me. I guess came, brought him things that he needed, and was not ashamed of my chain. He wasn't ashamed of him being chained to the uh, to the uh, soldier. You know, um, you know they they beheaded him over there in Rome, and Christians were being persecuted very hard under Nero, under Kaiser Caesar Nero. And um, I mean, this guy was one of the worst persecutors. He history tells us he would um, he would take uh, the believers, hang them from a rope, put tar on them, put uh, wrap them up in inflammable stuff, and set them on fire, burn them alive, as he as he rode his chariot through the garden. He's the one you see in the cartoons on the roof playing a fiddle and Rome is burning. Well, that's him. And then he said the Christians did it. Uh, many believe the truth is he approached the Senate and he wanted to rebuild Rome, but they would not give him the money for it. You know, just like today. You know how it goes. Um, <laughs> he didn't have the votes for it, so he burnt the place down. And when things got hot for him, he blamed the Christians. Always a good scapegoat, Christians. You're going to see the same thing happening uh, today. It's already started. So don't be ashamed of people who serve the Lord and are in trouble with the authorities. Go help them. Go refresh them. Don't be ashamed. And then in verse 17, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Now, Rome, you know, like, like it was like New York, a great metropolis city. You just don't go in there and you just, you know, you know where this guy's at? Oh, yeah, he's down the street here. No, this, is a, this is a big, big city full of people. And so he had to go looking around asking questions, and it was dangerous. But he did it anyway. He searched me out uh, very diligently and found me. And verse 18, The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, that day is the day of judgment, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. So, you know, I'm always amazed. I know we're saved by grace through faith. And I know that this is a gift of God. And I know that the Lord has paid for all my sins. But yet as I read scripture, let me read you the scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says here that, um, let's see, chapter 5. Um, and he talks about the terror of the Lord. Let me see if I can't find it. He says, 
Ah, here it is in verse 11. Let me go to verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is the seat, the judgment seat of Christ is where the believers go for their rewards. Heaven and hell has been taken care of. We've been bought with the blood. We've been purchased. We belong to God, and, uh, and that's our inheritance. And we have heaven. But we're going to get rewarded for how we lived, the judgment seat of Christ. Now, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror, the terror, of the Lord, this is the judgment seat, not the white throne, the judgment seat, okay, of, of believers. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. Praise God. And so we, we need to live right for God and not just, well, you know, I'm saved and uh, it's okay. No, we, we, need, we need to live like uh, our lives dependent on it, like, like heaven dependent on it. And that's how Paul lived. And that's how the saints lived, many of them, and, and the prophets. And so now in verse 18, he says here, the last verse in this chapter, the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, again, the judgment seat of Christ that day, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knows very well. All right, we read that, didn't we? That's the last verse. And um, I'm going to go into the next chapter since that's a little short, what we just studied now. So let me find, okay, here we go, next chapter. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and in uh, verse 1, let's see what we got here. And here he's talking about being strong. Verse 1, Thou therefore, my son, therefore, in light of all these things we just read, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. So, be strong. You know, like um, the Lord, the Lord told Joshua, "Be, be brave. Be very courageous. You're going to go fight giants and conquer nations." Uh, so they they had to have strength. And they, they had to have courage. And here he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, when we're talking about the grace of God, the scripture tells us that every man is giving, given a measure of grace. To every man is giving, given a measure of faith. And that measure is like a ruler. That's where you actually measure something. Uh, Jesus, he was given without any measure the fullness of the Spirit. But you and me are not Jesus. We're saved people who have the Holy Spirit in us. And that Holy Spirit has baptized us into the body of Christ and given us gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit are you all baptized into one body, and he's distributed the gifts in the body of Christ. And so he's saying, be strong in the grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we read how Paul had problems. We think it was his eyes. He had, he had infirmities, sickness. And he asked the Lord three times to remove this. And the Lord answered after the third time and said, no. He said, no. You know, um, not everybody always gets healed. God, God has a purpose uh, in what he's doing with us. All things work together with good, for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And so uh, the Lord said to Paul that his grace is sufficient. 
God's grace is sufficient. I remember a pastor friend of mine in a San Antonio. He had uh, some kind of cancer in, in the uh, in the facial area and and the, and inside by the throat and the lip nodes. And he wasn't a young man no more, late sixties or early seventies. And um, he went through it, man. They you know, they cut him up and stuff, and his mouth and face was crooked, hung crooked for a while until it healed after a while. But he's fine. And I remember, you know, him telling me, he says, God, he says, Peter, God's grace is sufficient. Amen? And that's, and that's where we have to be strong. All right, God had Joshua and David strong in physical battles, he's telling us to be strong in the grace of God, that unmerited favor he's given you, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And so he's given this to us, and it's a spiritual war, and we need to be strong in the grace of God. Verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Faithful men. How do you know if a man is faithful? Well, you don't. You don't. And God tests us. That's why the scripture says, when Paul wrote to Timothy before, he says, uh, you don't take a novice, a beginner, a new believer, and make him a pastor. Makes no difference how good he preaches, how good he teaches. You just don't do that. Because he's got to be tested. Because we don't know what's inside a man's heart. We don't know what's going to happen when a push comes to shove, when the trouble comes. Remember Peter? I'll die with you. I'll go to prison with you. Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the before the cock crows. Third time he denied Christ, cursing and swearing. And he and then, and then the uh, rooster crowed and and he wept bitterly. But the Lord forgave him and Peter was uh restored. But don't think um you know, don't don't think that we uh you know we're so we're so strong and everything. You gotta be tested. So those are faithful men. The same, okay, and he says, uh, the things which you have heard of me among many witnesses. There's many witnesses. Uh, as Paul went to establish churches as he preached the gospel throughout Asia and other places um, in Europe, there's, there's many witnesses. And, and so he says that the things you heard of me, again, the good uh, testimony of the sufferings he endured and God pulled him through all these things he says this is what you commit to faithful men who will do what who shall be able to teach others also and so this is written in 60 something AD maybe 65 AD close to where Paul got beheaded. And uh, here we are in 2021, October of 2021, and there are faithful men who are still teaching. They got it from other faithful men all through history. And the stable, the thing that was stable through all those centuries is the Word of God that we have. Not just, not oral transmission, but we have we have a written document here. We have the Word of God, the Living Word of God, and so we got the standard. So we commit to other men who will be able to teach others also. This is called discipleship. Make disciples of all nations, Jesus said. Verse uh, three: Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let's read the next verses with that. 
verse 4, No man that wore it goes to war, entangle it himself in the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. All right. Thou therefore endure hardness, persevere. Um, anybody who lives a righteous life, lives godly in this world for the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be persecuted. You can't get out of this. This is why a lot of people do not go further in the faith. I, I know a lot of people that they couldn't even hand out a Bible track. I mean, you know, here, here's the track. You go and you give this to, you know, I'm handing them out here in Mexico. I say, uh, Cristo te ama, you know, Christ loves you. Or Dios la bendiga. I, or uh, glory to Dios, glory to God, and, and you know, and even though I don't, I don't speak the language, um, and the little I know, I still go out, and I hand them out tracts. Praise God. And I've done this on my own without, without Carmen. If Carmen's with me, of course, well then, then you know we can try and talk to the person about the Lord. But there are people that can't even do that. In the body of Christ. Um, what are you going to do when it's time to, um, you know, you either shut up and go to jail or you stop preaching the gospel? You better go do this or that or we're going to we're going to lock you up. We're going to take away your money. We're going to take away your ability to work. We're going to make life terrible for you. So he says, endure hardness as a good soldier, a soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, soldiers trained to kill, trained for war. But we're, we're trained also, spiritual war. And he says that because you're a soldier, you don't get tangled up in this world with his affairs. You, you're, you're focused on the affairs of the Lord Jesus Christ and the preaching of the gospel, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier, and that's the Lord. Um, I remember reading a, a book about these young evangelists in India, where you're from, your pastors in India. Um, what was it called? Um, slum, slum Dogs, I think it was called. Slum is ghetto, ghetto, poor places, slum dogs. And these young evangelists, barefoot, they'd go to city to city and they'd preach the gospel. And when they finished preaching the gospel in the city, they said they would go outside the city and find a place to sleep in a ditch or somewhere because it was too dangerous after they finished preaching to stay in the city because somebody could kill them while they were sleeping or beat them up real bad. Uh, one of them said, who's got a great ministry now in Asia and in India, he's from India. Um, his, ma his name doesn't um, come to me, but the ministry is, well, his name is Johanan, J.P. Johanan. He's from India and Gospel for Asia, I believe it is. And he was one of the young men that was preaching the gospel. And he said that in one city, as they preached the gospel, a man came to him and calmly told him, if you don't go and leave right now, we're going to pour gasoline on you, petrol, and set you on fire. <laughs> well, they looked at each other and they left. And as they left, they wiped the dust off their feet against that city. Oh, yeah. And so... We need not to be tangled up in this world. You have to work in this world. You make a living, but you keep the priority of God and you never, ever get yourself so messed up like m many people have, especially in the rich countries like, like America. Doing all kinds of stuff, man, but can't even open up the Bible to read it or, 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 to, or to do anything for the Lord. 
You know, I wonder how many people were, um, could have been missionaries, but they decided to get rich instead, you know? And so we need not to get tangled up in the affairs of this life. Verse 5, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. I like this scripture. In other words, you're going to master something. You can be a master in jit, uh, in uh, in the um, in karate. You can be a, a master uh, in playing chess, a master chess player. Grand masters, international masters. There's but when you when you mas when you go for these masteries, you discipline yourself, or otherwise you won't get there. And this is saying, you're not going to get crowned. You're not going to win the championship. You're not going to win the game and get crowned, except you strive. You, you go through the motions. You do these things lawfully. A good example would be 100 people running a marathon. A marathon is, I believe, 26 miles. But one guy, he goes off to the side of the road, someone picks him up in a car, and they drive him to the finish line. And he waits a while, and when he sees, you know, the other guys down the road still, he, he sneaks back on, and he's running like he just ran all the 26 miles. Well, that's not lawful. You cannot cheat in God's kingdom if you're going to receive the crown. And verse 6 says, The husbandman that laboreth must first be partaker of the fruits. Let's see what that means. He says, And consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Okay, we'll stop here with the husbandman. The husbandman that laboreth, the husbandman that it's called husbandry. We still, still use the word today. It's farmer. It's a farmer. The farmer that labors, he's out there plowing the field. He, he you know, he prepared the, the uh, ground. He got all the big rocks out of the way. He plowed it. He went, he put the seed in. Oh, he's working hard. Well, he's the one that must first be the partaker of the fruits. In other words, when when his labor starts giving fruits, when the plants start to grow, whether corn, wheat, whatever, and it starts to grow, he's the first one to partake of those fruits because he did the labor. He did the work. Okay, strangers just don't come and start eating what he did. He's the first one who, because he worked for it. That's the uh, importance of work and then having the fruit of your labor. Amen. And so he's talking here, of course, about souls, souls of men. We that are out there, we that go out and preach the gospel, we that suffer for preaching the gospel, we that gave things up uh, to serve the Lord in whatever capacity we can. He says, we are going to be the first partakers of these fruits. Praise his holy name. So he says, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. You know, the Lord says that in a lot of places. He'll say in, in Revelation, he that, re he that read it, let him understand. He'll say it in Daniel. <laughs> He'll say it in many places. He'll say it in the Gospels. He that read it, let him understand. And so the Lord wants to give us understanding and we, when we do read it and we don't understand, I know now as a more older saint and more mature saint that things I didn't understand before or thought I understood them. And as time went by and I learned more and grown more in Christ, I've got better understanding. I used to think when I worked at, the, uh, I worked at a rescue mission in Chicago, where we would preach the gospel, give clothing and food to the men, try to bring them to the Lord, the homeless men in the streets, and anybody else that came in there. And um, 
I was the one um, that was the peacekeeper. If anyone acted up, I, I, I would gather up some of the workers, some guys in the program, and I'd give the guy the choice. I'd tell him, you, behave yourself or we're going to drag you out of here. And then I read the scripture in Timothy, lay hands suddenly on no man. Lay hands suddenly on no man. <laughs> so I thought, oh, okay. This means don't grab him right away and just throw him out of the mission. Give him another chance. But later on, shortly afterwards, <laughs> I learned that he's talking about ordination. Don't lay your hands just on anybody and ordain them a deacon or a, a pastor or some preacher. Or an you know, because you do that and they go off into sin, you're partakers of their sin because, man, you didn't, you didn't obey God. People got to be proven. They got to be proven in the ministry. They got to go through the steps. They got to go through the easy things first before you put them in a big position. So consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Let's pray. I'm sorry I didn't start praying when I started the uh, lesson, but we'll pray now. Father, we just come to your uh, throne of grace, and we just thank you. And Lord, I hope tomorrow we can uh, contact one another and have this and see each other face to face and go through the Bible study. But if not, I'll, I'm going to send this to you, my brothers, and um, we will, and you will, you'll see me that way, and we'll have a Bible study that way. But we're going to have to resolve this and hopefully get in touch with one another. In the meantime, we we send emails to one another. So, Father, I just thank you. Bless all the pastors, dear Lord. Some of them are, are having a difficult time. They're very poor, suffering. Their congregations are poor and suffering. The jobs are very scarce. And now with the lockdowns, that's even that's even worse. But I pray for India, Lord. I pray for these pastors. Let them endure, Father. Pray for the blind pastors that only, that they, they remember the verses. I pray for the ones that are old and infirmed and, They've had surgeries and heart attacks and strokes, and they continue on, Lord. Suffering. The grace of God is sufficient. Oh, Jesus, prepare us, Lord, for the things that are about to come. Prepare the churches. Help my brother Kinta right now, Father. We pray for him, and we've been praying that you heal him of the typhoid, and it doesn't get worse. Heal him of it, Lord and strengthen him that he may continue. Bless his family, his wife, his daughters, his sons, Lord, and jobs for them, Lord. And bless me, Lord, that I might continue to uh, uh, minister unto them uh, uh, in, in, in uh, the Bible studies and financially and donations and whatever, Lord. And so I pray for that also, dear Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. So again, we just thank you, Lord. And may this Bible lesson be a blessing and may we all continue and press into that kingdom and and put the cross in front of us and put our hand to the cross, to the plow, and look not back no more. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving sinners like us. In your precious name we pray. And we also pray about the land, that the land be given to Brother Kinta, and that a church would be established. And we thank you, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, my brothers, I love you, and the Lord, the Lord is good, huh? Hopefully we'll see each other in the morning.